International Load Line Convention, 1966. Maritime Academy. Load Line Rules, Ames, understands the International Load Line Convention, objectives, knows the definitions as per the Load Line Rules, knows the rules and regulations relating to conditions of assignment of freeboard, describes Type A and B ships, 1860 many ships sunk due to overloading, two states introduced loading lines for ship, 1931st LL Convention adopted. Based on reserve buoyancy, sufficient free board means adequate stability and avoid excessive stress on ship's hull due to overloading. 1966 L, C adopted by IMO, modified 1988, re-examined amended 1930 convention. Provision was made for tankers by subdivision and damage stability calculation. Potential hazards in different zones slash seasons were considered. Several additional safety measures concerning doors, freeing ports, hatchways, were introduced. Condition of assignment applies to new ships engaged on international voyages, i.e. ships whose keel was laid on slash after December 21, 1971. An international load line certificate is issued by the certifying authority to every ship of 24 meters length or more after being surveyed, marked as per the regulations. Merchant Shipping Load Line Regulations The usual validity of an international load line certificate shall not exceed five years. These regulations do not apply to warships, non-power-driven wooden ships of primitive build, fishing vessels, ships solely navigating in the Great Lakes and parts of the St. Lawrence River. The convention includes three NXs. NXI Regulations for Determining Load Lines 1. General 2. Condition of Assignment of Freeboard 3. Freeboard Slash Correction 4. Special Requirements for Ship Assigned Timber Freeboard NX2 Zones, Areas and Seasonal Periods NX3 Certificates, International Load Line Certificate, 1966 Load Line Symbol shall be marked on both side amidships Location of mark are calculated slash verified by class and reflected in relevant certificate. SLL is primary line than other marks which are derived. It depends on ship's type, length, number of superstructures, amount of shear, bow height, etc. Type A ship shall be assigned a free board not less than that based on Table A of Regulation 28. Table A, B, the tabular freeboard for type of bis ships, length of ship, meters, freeboard, millimeters. Corrections applied to tabular freeboard A and B. Correction to the freeboard for ships under 100 meters in length. Correction for block coefficient. Correction for depth. Correction for position of deck line. Deduction for superstructures and trunks, shear correction, minimum bow height. The freeboard obtained after applying correction to tabular freeboard is called minimum or summer freeboard. Timber load line. A timber deck cargo may be regarded as giving a ship a certain additional buoyancy and a greater degree of protection against the sea. For that reason, ships carrying a timber deck cargo may be granted a reduction of free board, calculated according to the provisions of Regulation 45, and marked on the ship's side in accordance with the provisions of Regulation 6, 3, and 4. Associated definition slash terms, molded depth, the vertical distance measured from top of keel to top of freeboard deck beam at side. Freeboard, vertical distance amidships between the upper edge of the deck line and upper edge of the related load line. Freeboard deck, normally the uppermost continuous deck exposed to weather and sea which has permanent means of closing all openings in the weather part, and below which all openings in the sides of the ship are fitted with permanent means of watertight closing. Low Line Rules Deck Line The deck line is a horizontal line 300 mm in length and 25 mm in breadth. It shall be marked amidships on each side of the ship, and its upper edge shall normally pass through the point where the continuation outwards of the upper surface of the freeboard deck intersects the outer surface of the shell. The location of the reference point and the identification of the freeboard deck shall in all cases be indicated on the International Load Line Certificate. Type A ship is a ship designed to carry only liquid cargoes in bulk. 
has a high integrity of the exposed deck with only small openings to cargo compartments closed by watertight gasketed steel covers and a low permeability of loaded cargo compartments. Type B ship is any ship that does not meet the provisions for a type of ship. Type B 6D ship is a term used to describe a type B ship of over 100 meters which satisfies certain additional conditions of assignment with respect to structure and damage stability and qualifies for a reduction in its tabular freeboard. This reduction is not to be more than 60% of the difference between the tabular A and tabular B free boards for the appropriate ship length. Type B 100 ship is a term used to describe a type B ship of over 100 meters which satisfies certain further improvements in design, additional to those for a type B 60 ship with respect to structure and damage stability, becoming similar to a type of ship and qualifies for a reduction in its tabular freeboard up to 100%, i.e. total difference between the tabular A and tabular B freeboards for the appropriate ship length. Tabular freeboard, a term used to indicate the freeboard value determined directly from the freeboard tables, given separately for type A and type B ships, under Regulation 28, for a so-called standard ship, and corresponds solely on ship length. The standard ship is deemed to be a ship built to highest standard requirements of the classification society and has the following five characteristics. Length to depth ratio of 15, L slash D equal 15, block coefficient of 0.68, no superstructure, parabolic shear profile of the freeboard deck, and attaining a particular height at the forward and after perpendicular as prescribed by formulae, depending on ship length. Minimum bow height above the assigned summer load line as prescribed by formulae, depending on CB and length of ship. Assigned freeboard, a term for the final summer and other freeboards as calculated, marked and entered in the load line certificate by the certifying authority. Scantling draft, a term used for the maximum draft which meets the ship's strength requirements. The maximum load draft for assigned free boards must be less than scantling draft. Position 1. Expose free board superstructure and raise quarter deck within one quarter of the ship's length from forward perpendicular. Position 2. Expose superstructure decks outside one quarter of the ship's length from forward perpendicular. Conditions of assignment of freeboard for all ships. These are certain requirements which must be met to ensure water tightness of openings and the ability of the ship to rapidly free itself of water on its decks. The structural strength of the ship must be sufficient for the freeboard assigned to her. Her stability in all probable loading conditions must be sufficient for the freeboard assigned to her, having regard to the intended service of the ship, stability criteria, bulkheads at exposed ends of enclosed superstructure are to be of efficient construction, with openings capable of being closed. Hatchways are to have combings of sufficient height, strength, and means of closing them watertight. Machinery space openings are to be efficiently framed and enclosed by a steel casing of substantial strength. Doors and covers are to close openings weather tight. Conditions of assignment of freeboard cunt. Manholes in exposed position on the freeboard or superstructure deck are to be fitted with a substantial cover to secure them watertight. Ventilators are to have means of closing and securing weather tight. Air pipes are to have means of closing them weather tight. Cargo ports and similar openings are to be fitted with doors designed to ensure water tightness and structural integrity of the shell. Scuppers, inlet and discharges which pass through the hull are to be fitted with automatic non rotor valves. Conditions of assignment of freeboard cunt. Port holes below the freeboard deck and in an enclosed superstructure are to be fitted with a hinge deadlight which can be closed and secured watertight. Accommodation deck houses are to be of efficient construction with safe access. Exposed ports of the freeboard deck and superstructure deck are to be fitted with efficient guard rails or guard wires and stanchions or bulwarks. Gangway under deck passage and all means of access are to be designed, constructed and fitted with lifelines, access ladders, guard rails so as to provide effective protection for the crew. Freeing ports. Where bulwarks on any exposed decks form wells, they must be provided with efficient means for rapidly freeing the decks of water. The lower edges of freeing ports should be as near the deck as practicable. Two-thirds of the freeing port area is required to be provided in the half of the well nearest the lowest point of the shear curve, where the deck has shear. 
openings in the bulwarks are protected by bars spaced approximately 230 millimeters apart. If shutters are fitted, these should be prevented from jamming. Conditions of assignment of freeboard cunt. Protection of crew. Efficient guardrails or bulwarks of minimum height 1 meter are to be fitted on all exposed parts of freeboard and superstructure decks. A lower rail may be permitted by the administration. The maximum vertical spacing between deck and lower rail is 230 millimeters, and between other rails is 380 millimeters. Satisfactory means should be provided for protection of crew in getting to and from their quarters and other parts used in the working of the ship. Side scuttles, below the freeboard deck or within the unclosed superstructures, side scuttles should be fitted with efficient hinged, watertight inside dead lights. No side scuttle should be fitted with its sill below a line drawn parallel to the freeboard deck at side and having its lowest point 2.5% of the chef's breadth above the summer water line or 500 millimeters, whichever is the greater distance. Special conditions of assignment for Type A ships. 1. Machinery casings to be protected by an enclosed poop or bridge of standard height, or deck house of equivalent strength and height. The casing may be exposed if there are no doors fitted giving access from the freeboard deck, or if a weather-tight door is fitted and leads to a passageway separated from the stairway to the engine room by a second weather-tight door of equivalent material. 2. Gangway and access, an efficiently constructed fore and aft gangway should be fitted at the level of the superstructure deck between poop and midship bridge or deck house, or equivalent means such as passages below deck. If houses are all aft, satisfactory arrangements should be made to allow crew to reach all parts of the ship for working purposes. 3. Hatchways All exposed hatchways on freeboard and forecastle decks or on top of expansion trunks are to be provided with efficient watertight covers of steel or equivalent material. 4. Freeing arrangements should have open rail fitted for at least half the length of the exposed parts of the weather deck, with the upper edge of the sheer strake being kept as low as possible. Where superstructures are connected by trunks, open rails should be fitted for the whole length of the exposed parts of the freeboard deck in way of the trunk. Items that will be checked during load line survey. A visual examination of the load line certificate and all other certificates to ensure that they are valid and all endorsements are carried out. A general inspection to ensure that no unauthorized modifications are carried out which affect the condition of assignment of load lines for the vessel. An inspection of the strength in general will be carried out. One or two holds may be internally inspected to gauge the strength of the transfer skirter, framing, knees, etc. This is so that the vessel will be able to withstand flooding of the compartment. The strength of superstructure bulk heads and machinery casing walls will be checked. Survey items continuation. The master must be provided with loading and ballasting information to be capable of carrying out such operations without causing excessive stresses. Stability information has also to be provided to enable him calculate the stability of the ship. The position and marking of the load lines on the P and S side of the ship will be confirmed to be as per the load line certificate. Hatch covers are to be weather tight. Tests will be carried out on one or more hatch covers as the surveyor decides. All fittings of the hatch covers such as rubber packing and closing appliances are to be in good condition. Survey items continuation. Ventilators are to be capable of being closed weather tight. If the covers are permanent, packing should be in good condition. Ventilator flaps are to be operative and marked open and shut. Watertight door packing is to be in good condition and the position of dog bolts are to be marked open and shut. Air pipe flaps are to be capable of being shut, packing in good condition and valves operative. Machinery spaces openings to be capable of being tightly shut. Port holes are to be weather tight with those below the main deck being fitted with dead lights and capable of being closed watertight. Survey items continuation. All inlet and outlet valves are to be checked that they are watertight. The four peak tank screw down valve is to be capable of being closed watertight. A lifeline is to be provided on deck for use in rough weather. Guard rails and bulwarks are to be fitted. Catwalks are to be provided on tankers. Freeing ports provided on the bulwarks should not be blocked or obstructed. The spurling pipe opening must be capable of being closed. The educator system for the chain locker and four peak stores must be working. 
Question. State the conditions under which an international load line certificate may be canceled. The conditions are as follows. 1. The ship does not comply with the conditions of assignment. 2. The structural strength of the vessel is reduced such that it is unsafe. 3. The information on the basis of which the free board were assigned are incorrect. 4. The certificate is not endorsed in accordance with the requirement relating to periodical inspections. 5. The new certificate is issued with respect to the ship. 6. Change of registry to another country. Under what circumstances may an extension be granted to an international load line certificate? Owner requests for extension of the certificate before the current certificate expires. The ship will then be surveyed to check that the vessel complies with the relevant requirements of the load line convention. The assigning authority may when satisfied with the surveyor's report and after notifying the director of marine that the vessel complies with the requirements relating to stability and if it considers it not practicable to issue the new certificate before the expiry of the present one, extend the period of validity of the present one to a period not exceeding five months. International Load Line Convention, 1966 Maritime Academy, 